Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. I'm Jerry. Joining me, I've got Max and Terry, and we're going to talk about uh, Carlos Tactics. <clears throat> what has Ancelotti brought to Everton so far? Um, what was changed since he's been involved? Uh, maybe something that stayed the same since uh, Duncan had in implemented something, and maybe he was just kind of like, hey, I like this. Um, I think the one thing that I that I noticed so far, guys, for just to go ahead and launch this, is the fact that it it seems like he's a uh, he's a pragmatist that doesn't necessarily say this is the way I want it to be going into it. He likes to kind of judge things based on the way the the the, the team works, the squad works, and kind of go from there. Um, and he'll change things mid game. Uh, I feel like 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 we saw in Brighton. Um, in the Brighton match, which I found very interesting. Uh, I'll give specifics on that uh, later. But uh, to start off with, I think, Terry, it's your turn to go first. Um, what's something that you've noticed? I can, I can give you a specific and tell you to roll with it, but I, I'm curious what you guys have noticed, and then we'll, we'll kind of go from there. Well, the most obvious one is that sort of, like, you know, interchangeable sort of fluid formation that we keep doing, like, I noticed his first game with Burnley, wasn't it? And I remember watching the Burnley game going, with, you know, it says back four, but that looks like a back three. And, and you know, the way Coleman was tucked in, I was like, and I watched for ages, I'm going, is, that a, is it a back three? Like, is it yeah. four? And I'm just, like, looking at it funny. But then, obviously, as the games went on, it started, like, you know, the, the formation come out as, as three at the back, and then we'd be playing in a four. And we seemed to just sort of switch between two different like setups based on the fullbacks um depending on, on you know whether we're in possession out of possession and you know what which side has got the fullback so it's either Sadibe will play ahead of Coleman but he'll really be you know he'll be the right wing back rather than a right midfielder ahead of another right back and then mm -hmm. the other way around when um when Baines played instead of um instead of Luca Dean it was the Baines was the third centre back rather than the right hand side, and um, that was something I noticed like straight away. But it's 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 a, just a little quirk that I, you know was very specific to Carlo since he came in, and it might be something he's going to do you know going forward that he wants that sort of interchangeability, or it might just be something that he he looked at the plays he had and thought because he mentioned in his press conference and in interviews since Coleman and Baines, Coleman and Baines, he seems to have. This sort of um, idea that, like, oh, I need to utilize Coleman and Baines as like the experienced players in the team. Like, maybe that's what he's done in other teams that he's gone into. And you know, right? You know, there's a lot of young players in the squad, but I'm going to lean on these two, you know, experienced heads. Um, that's probably the main thing. The fact that I, I just didn't expect it. To, you know, that that to be one of the changes he's made. He's stuck with the two strikers pretty much every game. Like, mostly Calvert Lewin and Richarlison. But uh, Keane's played, you know, um, comes off the bench and he started at Newcastle. Uh, and a little bit more possession-based than, than certainly than what Duncan Ferguson was doing. Where it's Some games it's it's all right. Some players suit it, some don't. It, it, it really hurt us, I think, against Liverpool. We were pinging it around the back and we couldn't get away from their press. But in other games, it's, you know, it's been helpful. We've dictated the game and, you know, it's, it's really suited the likes of say Mason Holgate he seems to be a lot more comfortable at centre back when he's touching the ball a lot more his problems used to be concentration I found and so when, true when he's involved constantly either as um, a centre midfield like under Ferguson or when he's a centre back who's getting the ball regularly he seems to play a lot better so it's made a better player of him but yeah like, it, it's a lot of small Small changes at the minute with Carlo. There's no big sweeping change that we've seen yet. Still the same personnel. There's no one new come in, and um, it's just made these little things that you know, if you you're not looking, you might not even notice. Yeah, the formation thing was really messing with me when he first came in. I did the same thing where I was kind of like, you know, you'd see, you'd look at our lineup the way we've, you know, we we were understanding how the thing would be, and then we we're like, wait a minute. Like, are they, did they intentionally mess with the lineup? And But no, it was like it was changing based on possession. Uh, Tom Davies, you know, you're thinking, okay, well, he's playing left mid today. And then when we have possession, he's tucking in and going 
So, and that's what Bernard is doing a lot of. You see Bernard going inside a lot more, so he's able to, we're able to utilize that close, that close control that he has and utilize his distribution a lot more. That was, it's one of the things that people always said, I feel like Bernard would be, would be so great, you know, playing in the, in the middle when he never plays much in the middle, like ever. But we're getting to see those kind of qualities by him being able to tuck in like that more. Um, and Dean pushes forward. Uh, it's it's kind of I don't know I I'm fascinated by it I think it's different uh, however I also wonder if it's the kind of thing that's gonna be I feel like once teams know we're doing it it's pretty easy to adjust around if you need to um, but I like having an additional force kind of uh, creating you know playmaking up the middle more because that's, that's something we were missing it was always on the flanks crossing in and to have something kind of attacking the center that's nice. Um, so anyway, you, you mentioned a few other things, but we'll get there in a minute. Let's go to, let's go to Max, okay? Because I don't want to sit there and list everything and then have Max be like, well, you said them all, Jerry. Yeah, huh. so, yeah. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think, arguably, you're flattering him a bit too much there, Jerry. I think he's having to deal with what he's got rather than implementing what he wants, if that makes any sense. I, I don't think he's got the resources to have a team that plays the type of football that he wants to see as mm. of yet. Okay. I, I that's think probably I, true. I reiterated this when I was doing the preview for the Brighton game. I think that's one of the pitfalls of appointing a manager, particularly around the winter period when you've got so many games coming at you, is that not only have you got a fixture every other couple of days, the, the lads, are, the, uh, the fitness levels are considerably, I don't want to say poor, but they're not, Okay. Around you know yeah. a few a few weeks earlier or earlier on in the season, um, I just thought I'd come out with who the the, the ever present starters have been in in his five games at the club. So you got Pickford, Sadibi, which Terry said is a, an interesting one to see the development of that. Obviously, mm-hmm. it lends its hands to the you know the shift in the formation from the three five two four four two throughout the game. Uh, Sadibi, Holgate, Dominic Calvert Lewin, Richarlison, and Gilfie Sigurdsson, which may be something that comes back to bite them on the backside in in weeks to come, given the uh, the performances of Gilfie Sigurdsson, particularly uh, at Anfield. But I felt like, um, obviously, Dunk come in and had the impact that he had. Um, I think Ancelotti piggybacked off that a tad mm-hmm. for the for, for the Burnley game and the Newcastle game because I feel like the the work ethic and the desire to run hard almost carried over from Dunk's stint as caretaker manager and then we've seen we've come up, we've come up against Manchester City and we've come up against Liverpool um, and I've seen and this is where me sort of I don't think we've quite got what he wants as of yet and I do feel like it's going to be a couple of transfer windows until we do the, just the, the decisions like for example the substitutions have been quite odd um, and again, circumstance hasn't helped them when you've got Bernard getting injured in the warm up, and you've got to play Tom Davies out wide, which I'm not mm-hmm. a, I'm not a fan of particularly. But I feel like yeah, the the City game went how it went, expected to get beat really. But the the Liverpool game was almost an adoption of the same tactics of of don't press, sit off, mm-hmm. uh, and I just think that did not work in the in the slightest and that was just an absolute embarrassment from from the, particularly the second half to close. But I don't know man, we've got we've got players to come back. We've got Jabamin, we got a who mm-hmm. again I that they've got they they've got to impress me. I d I don't quite know who who they're gonna take the place of if, if that's to say. I, I know we were you know we're really thin in midfield and all the spotlight seems to be on, as I said, Sigurdsson and, and Schneidlin for not being athletic enough, not getting the foot in, being too passive. Um, is Jibaman going to be the answer for that? We haven't even got a return date on him yet, so we don't know. And it will be. Up until his hamstring injury wasn't really impressing me. And I think given the... Uh, even the form of... I was going to say the form of Bernard, but even the, the form of Theo Walcott as of late has been considerably improved. Um but yeah, listen. This this is Carlo Ancelotti. He knows a lot more about 
our three football than our three brains put together. So he, I think he's in this for what's his contract twenty twenty four. So mm. he's he's in this for at least a, a medium to long period of time. And as I say, we're financial fair play. I don't quite know how we're gonna shape and mould the squad that he wants, but I suppose that remains to be seen. Yeah, I, I agree with you and I disagree because it's impossible to disagree with you that we've got that he's he doesn't have enough players to work with. He doesn't have the players he wants. I don't I don't think there's any way to disagree with that. That's like factual. Winter period, he was he was focused on rotation. He said that. Um, I don't know. I feel like he was throwing tactics in there though that in some of those changes he was forced to make but i feel like when cuz people keep saying tom davies out wide well technically yeah on the defensive end but not really when we were attacking you know what i mean how many times did you see tom davies take the ball and go down the left flank and cross back because luca dean was always overlapping like every time we had the ball he was always overlapping. And that's what's, that's what's kind of doing my head in because everyone is saying Tom Davies playing wide. And I'm like, he only sort of was, though, because the tactic Athlet- was so weird. A- athleticism, though, Jerry, it's a huge factor when you're playing. Oh, you defensively? In a wide position. You mean defensively? Both, I, feel, I feel you've got, you know, even when you're on the ball or looking to receive the ball, you've got to be quick, quick, you've got to be sharp, you've got to be. He was able tucking to... in so much, though. You know what I mean? That's a. It's a tendency of a of a central player. Um, but no, I, Bernard's I doing the same thing. That's what I'm talking about. That's why I think it's a tactic thing. You know. Mm. Mm. Arguably, but again, I just I think it's just down to the selections at his at his disposal. It's I just don't. It's not an ideal situation I, at all. I, I, there's no dis, there's no disagreement on that. I definitely am with you on that. I just think that he's doing some things that I haven't seen before. Uh, that kind of makes me – that's what – when I'm sitting there looking at the screen, that's why I was fascinated by this discussion. Because when you're looking and you see the formation change based on who has the ball, I think that's – it's not an uncommon thing. Other players do – other teams do that. I just think it's pretty kind of cool. Because with Duncan, it was very – it was straightforward. Four four two. There you go. Go back to basics. This is a basic formation. Um, and then defensively – uh, for for Carlo, it seems like four four two. That's what we're doing. You know, whenever they have the ball, we're dropping back. Um, but when we have the ball, it's doing some strange things. Like when you mentioned Sidibe getting getting starts out at right right wing, um, it's mm. odd. It's a strange thing. Um, so I, I find it fascinating. I think he's and so anyway, formationally. I feel like there, we could talk a lot about, about – that's to me the most fascinating thing that's happened is how he's utilizing this. And I don't always think the changes work, but I think they're different, and I think it catches teams off guard now, but it might not in the future. Maybe in the future he'll have those places, players you're talking about, Max. I'd be interested to see, you know, what with different personnel how that system works because the sort of, you know, the players he's playing – you could you could easily see some of the injured players going into that because he's playing Gilfy Sigurdsson as like a deep lying playmaker. I, you know, put Andre Gomez in there and instead mm-hmm. of Schneidlin, get put Kabamin in there. I mean, yeah. we don't know whether Kabamin is going to be any good, but you know, I, I think there's players who could go in and head the players who aren't performing who probably don't suit the style he's playing, like, like the Schneidlins and the Sigurdsons. Mm-hmm. Even you know, it will be that sort of inside left that Bernard's been playing like the you know in the tack it's the left side of a middle three like mm-hmm. Iwobi I think could play there as well I mean I, I do prefer Bernard but Iwobi could play in there we would lose a bit of skill but you'd get a lot more physicality and he'd mm-hmm. be able to move forward from from the centre which which shoots Iwobi more than staying rigorously out wide so the personnel is a big thing I, I, I genuinely think that Carlo now will likely do what Rod- Brendan Rodgers did at Leicester. He'll just use the rest of the season. You know, he's still got to win games. He's still got to try and achieve as much as he can, but he'll really assess the squad. I think the rotation's going to be like, right, I want to see what, you know, Michael Keane's all about, what Delph's all about, what Schneiderlin's all about. So he knows by the summer who he wants to keep to suit his system and who he, you know, he wants to get rid of. Mm-hmm. You mentioned some earlier... And I think maybe you mentioned it some in the previous video, uh, playing out of the back. 
okay? Uh, against Liverpool, right? But against Brighton, you saw him several times on camera telling Pickford, kick it out. Do not play it short, get it out, okay? Um, <clears throat> and he talked about how, you know, we've got a big striker who's good in the air to be able to, and he's fast, and there's a lot of things that he can do. Um, so there, there's that possibility, but is it also a thing where he's thinking, we're not ready to be playing out of the back against everyone right now? Because that's why, that's why I get the vibe about Carlo, that he's sort of like, if it's not working, I'm going to change it. You know, like I understand the, the, the possession based playing out of the back, open up more spaces, create space, you know, um, jamming it down some of these teams throats uh, that bunker back when they do bunker back. It's not the best deal. So we need to kind of be trying to create space. But some of these teams that we've been doing it against, you know, we, it's not really the smart play. Against playing against Liverpool, that was, I just don't think that's the way against a team like them. They press so hard against us. We gave the ball away repeatedly like that. And playing out of the back was just a bad idea. Um, so anyway, that is something that we have, we have noticed Carlo change. Um, and I don't think playing out of the back is going to go away, but I think it's going to depend situationally because he does seem to be a pragmatist, um, which is good and bad, right? Uh, mm. You know what I mean. I, rem- I remember. I remember you saying the same thing about Sam Allardyce. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah so you, totally. I'd be a bit subdued on that way. Yeah. Oh no, but it's but it's kind of with with Allardyce. It did seem like he was doing that, but at least Ancelotti's playing some attacking football. It's different. Um, Ancelotti is actually yeah. making decisions, and we're actually scoring goals. You know, one can be more successful at it than the other. <laughs> Sam Allardyce was not a pragmatic manager. He says he is to make it seem like the bad football that is his signature isn't his signature. His signature style, he's, he plays one way and it's awful to watch. And he's always been like that. But in order to like sort of pretend that it's not him, it's the players he's got available. Mm-hmm. He says it's pragmatism. Uh-huh. He's never, he's, he's never, I've never seen him play two different ways. He's always played the same way, the same way he played at us. But it was more acceptable when the club was about when clubs were on the brink of relegation because it meant they won some matches and stayed up, so they were all happy with it. Mm. So he's not a pragmatist. I, I think you can. I think you can still make the argument for it because he's making changes based on results. You know what I mean? He's making changes based on its result. He's not sitting there thinking I'm going to play my system all the time. Because but the problem is there's still no flexibility. Even when he changes his system, nothing changes. So I think it's just not a great manager is what that boils down to, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and sure, like, just to touch on what you said about uh, essentially goals being the difference, that I can't remember the stat precisely, but I think it was just after like the two games in charge, so Burnley and Newcastle, I think we amassed something like 40-odd shots, just something ridiculous, and I always find that a, a, a good indication that a, a team's getting back on track. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think just to touch on one of the comments that I made earlier, nine of our last ten goals in the league have been scored by either Calvert Lewin or Rich That's Carlson. the next point I've got written down here. I wanted to talk about that. So the these two lads are looking pivotal mm-hmm. to to our attack and play. Yeah, I mean it's uh, they're looking good now. Uh, it's we're not getting as many goals from other locations, but uh, Carlo is is feeding them. They're being fed, you know, which is, that's a big part of it. Um, and it's, I think they're being fed in different ways. It's not just launching it in the air and they have to beat three center backs in order to score, which is, that was, yeah, it's, it's being fed in different ways and it's good. Um, so anyway, uh, Anything else that we're kind of leaving out? I'm sure there there are some things, but these are the things that have stuck out: the strikers scoring scoring more goals, being fed in a variety of ways, uh, playing out of the back that just recently changed, uh, and formational flexibility, mm-hmm. even like fluidity mid game. Uh, yeah, anything else that sticks out for you guys? Um, the, the- Central midfielders possibly not playing as many forward passes. Um, 
again, it might just be me constantly having Vietnam flashbacks to Anfield, but the Sigurdsson and Schneidlin, just all it is is backward passes, backward passes all the time. I think they they collectively both made more passes towards Yeri Mina and Jordan Pickford than Calvert Lewin and and Richarlison. So that is uh, and their presence off the ball to just it wasn't there. We we were non-existent in the midfield. So I'd like to see us ramp up the presence in the in central areas as we go. On. Um, looking at the stats for. Tom Davies doing a, you know, forward passes a little bit better, but Sigurdsson and Schneiderlin, it's impossible to, yeah, it's very. It, <clears throat> it, so, question: Is this a result of the, us playing out of the back so much, and then feeling like they need to, like when they receive the ball, you know what I mean? Like feeling like they they have no no way to turn around to turn and actually like get forward. Uh, is, I, is that a result to, to of an, system? To an, to an extent, I would say so, yeah. But I also think it's a product of the fact that we've evolved into a, a more permanent 4-4-2 now than a 4-2-3-1 like we usually were. Um, Gilfie's a number 10. He's just a cut-and-dry number 10. I, I don't think this eight-roll suits him very well at all. Right. doesn't bring out his better football. Um, and... I'm sorry to say my affection for Morden Schneidlin's running thin um, is a it, 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 just one of those footballers that whoever you put him in midfield with, it just it dependent on the partnership that's there. Uh, they both they both got to bring the best out of, this, of each other in this partnership. Certainly doesn't. You got to make it th- things simple for him. It seems like the thing with Morgan Schneidlin be like four four two, shield the back four. There you go. And when he and when he's told that, it seems like he's all right. But anything more com- complicated, complex, it's sort of, yeah. That's the thing is when you saw him play well was under Duncan. You know, it was under Ferguson. Um, at least recently, anyway. Um, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, just thinking about that. Yeah, you got me bummed thinking about that damn FA Cup game. <laughs> you mentioned it and I was just like, shit, he's right. Ugh. So, I mean, uh, so that's it. At the moment, uh, we're talking uh, talking Carlo. Uh, I think there's definitely some differences between him and uh, the way Silva approaches the game. Um, I think that, and uh, the fact that people said, you kept hearing people say, he's not going to go in and completely revamp the system. He's going to tweak to try to make the team more efficient and better. And I feel like we're seeing that. It has been a lot of tweaking, you know, not drastic, very just gentle, turning the screws here and there. Um, it's, it's not really, you know, turning over any apple cards like this. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see. Because, uh, Max, when you mentioned him building off Duncan, yeah. I totally am with that. I think he's taken what Duncan was doing and he's trying to implement a little, little odd touches here and there. And a lot of them are based on necessity. So... Curious, very curious as to what happens when he when he hits the transfer market soon. If that actually happens, we're led to believe it will. But you know what? That's happened before, and you know it's gone down to the last day, and then the the window's over, and you're like, wait, what happened to all the players we were supposed to sign? So yeah. Anyway, guys, that's it for Carlos Tactics. Uh, Stay tuned uh, for if you're. I mean, if you're watching a video at the moment, pop on over to the podcast. We guys have got a quiz between these two guys. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure they'll ace it. Looking forward to them showing off their knowledge. Uh, Everton base. Just, just so you know. So check out, check that out if you will. If you've been digging the videos, please subscribe to the Toffee Blues YouTube channel. We'd sincerely appreciate it. If you want more Terry, check out the Liverpool Echo Fan Jury. He'll let you know on his Twitter when and where you can expect that. Uh, and if you want more Max. Uh, the Carlisle Podcast. Uh, yeah, check that out if you're interested in uh, careers in football or, you know, if that's where you want to head. Uh, if you want just information on it, Max does a lot of interviews about that. Um, yeah, it's this new enterprise. Check it out, all right? Uh, and, yeah, that's it at the moment. I don't have anything to to plug yet. So, anyway, everybody, uh, yeah. If you head on over the quiz, we'd appreciate it. If not, uh, we'll miss you.
Take care, everybody. Bye.